Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleagues on the dais, off the dais, faculty members, and young friends. Let me at the outset thank Mali for this opportunity. I think uh, it's been a great experience coming to God's own country, Cochin, and the hospitality of uh, Rajagiri. I think it's great hospitality. Thank you. Uh, I, I didn't know why Mali invited me for this and then said, okay, managing happiness is going to be what I'm talking about, going to talk about. Uh, when I kind of, looking back, I said, yes, I'm now in the retail industry for 10 years, leading HR, and retail has been in the news for the good reasons and bad reasons. And I've been with one of the larger companies, Reliance. And in retail specifically, if you look at it, 85% of our workforce are frontline staff at the stores who have to spend long hours, almost nine to 10 hours standing, getting minimum wages, but yet to be happy when even the last customer drops by at 9, 9.30 and have a plastic smile on his or her face. So that's where I think the challenge for us, bringing happiness in the faces of these people as well as, as well as having an engaged workforce becomes very critical and difficult. And in this VUCA world where today, if you look at retail, we are about 7% organized retail in this country. In the West, be it Europe or US, it's about 85%, 85 to 90%, which means there is tremendous scope and opportunity for organized retail in this country. And that is when you see all the major players like the Reliances, the Atibirlas, the Mahindras, all coming into retail. But at the end of, it, end of the day, I don't think the uh, businessmen have been happy, neither have been the customers. So it's great journey because at the end of the day, we have the threat of e-tailers. We have a good friend Raj here from Amazon who is a threat to us as brick and mortar retail. So I'm sure it's going to be a very, very challenging days ahead for us. So in this context, uh, I just thought I'll kind of run you to in terms of uh, this good uh, quote I saw from Guy Finley. Basically talking about ne never speak when you're angry, never act when you're fearful, never choose when you're impatient, but wait, peace will appear. This has a lot to do with happiness. At the end of the day, when you're angry, fearful or impatient, I don't think it's going to be a happy moment for us. So on this basis, if you look back, we from industry, we have budding HR managers who are going to come into industry. A lot of things, happiness correlates to loss of productivity, low morale of employees, poor teamwork, a lot of work-related accidents, are often the results of organizations' inability to manage the emotions of people or the happiness of people. So how do you, as HR managers, make sure that you have an engaged workforce? How do you ensure that you have a satisfied employee working for us? I think these can actually change and make sure that at the end of the day, your employees become productive and they work as a team and enjoy coming to work. So that becomes HR managers uh, a great opportunity in the days to come. Next, if you look at this triangle, it talks about self. Basically, we spoke about positive self-image, I think self-confidence. The panelists here were also saying, you know, today as students, one of the most important thing is to actually make sure that how we become confident. It is that confidence which is going to take us forward and meet the management challenges which is waiting for you outside in the corporate world. And when it comes to one-on-one, one-to-one, -on -one, one -one, it then becomes basically the client or customer focus, which it's not only in a marketing or a business development job, it's also about any job where you need to be on a one-to-one, -one where you have prejudices, biases coming in way, which would, I mean, which would spoil the happiness. And finally, it is about group. 
It's about cooperation among members. And all work is done through these relationships, which is very critical in a work, work environment. I'm sure we have all heard about EQ, social intelligence, emotional intelligence. I think these are very, very critical going forward to ensure that we remain happy. Social intelligence, it's the know-how in, involved in comprehending social situations and managing oneself successfully. Emotional in intelligence, as you all know, is the ability to perceive, express, understand, and regulate these emotions. How important is it to actually inculcate this in ourselves as corporate citizens is very, very critical, and I'm sure all of you know. And this is what will make sure that you either make or break in, an, in, a, in the corporate world. So it's important that you start working on these to ensure that at the end of the day, this can manage happiness for all of us. The major forces working, influencing working behavior, you have the organization culture. I think in organizations, I think it's the most important and critical thing. We talk about the mission, the vision, the culture, the beliefs, the values. These are things that becomes very important for an organization to be taken the way it is. Actually, Anish had put up a slide of those organizations which believe in values which are doing extremely well for themselves. So it's important that we need to have very strong values and beliefs as an organization to take it forward. Because today, we look at most organizations being very, very short term. They all build organizations to sell. Be it an IT organization, be it a retail company or any organization, it's all about what would be the uh, market price or net worth after a few years and how much could we sell it for. So that is not what it is. I think we need to have organizations to stay with the right values and beliefs, which very few organizations have. Next is the supervisory or managerial influence. The philosophy, the comp uh, competence, and leadership styles are very, very important for individuals, managers, leaders to take the organization, and these actually influence worker behavior to a large extent. Work group influence, which is social support, emotional support, support for uh, 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 meeting goals, which also becomes very critical. Actually, we all drive towards you know, ensuring that we have, uh, at the end of the day, organizations which focus towards our targets and goals and achieve them. So this becomes very important to ensure the worker behavior to ensure a happy work environment. The job influence, meaning, uh, and basically if you look at job influence, you have responsibilities, the knowledge of results, and uh, these actually have to be meaningful, the job influence. Otherwise, if there's no meaningfulness to it, it doesn't really work. So this is something which is also critical. Personal characteristics of the workers, abilities, interests, aptitudes, values, and expectation. These also are critical of the, pers the personal character characteristics of this worker. And finally, the family influence. The family influence is most critical to have a good work-life balance, to make sure that we all work with, and there are initiatives which are family initiatives in the organization and family-friendly culture which we create into the organization. So this, these could be the major forces influencing worker behavior for us to create a happy environment. And then coming into some of the themes in human relations which lead to effective human relations. Communication, which has to be very clear, which has to be transparent, which has to be open. Self-awareness of ourselves, which is very, very critical. Anish spoke about it earlier. We need to know in terms of what our strengths are, what areas to improve uh, we have. And then in terms of accepting that, the self-acceptance, which is critical. And then need to motivate ourselves. It's important that 
a day that you don't motivate yourself, you're not a self-starter, you don't come to work thinking that it's going to be a joyful day, it's not going to be what it is. The trust which needs to be created amongst employees, there needs to be openness, fairness, and then there needs to be self-disclosure, and finally, conflict resolution, which is basically a win-win situation, is what we all look for. So, if you look at this grid, basically it is about self-recognition, which is self-awareness, where we talk about emotional self-awareness, accurate self-assessment, and self-confidence. So, if we can actually kind of make sure that we are aware in terms of our strengths, emotionally being assessing ourselves well and ensuring that we are confident, then we move on to social recognition. Social awareness, which talks about empathy, organizational awareness, service orientation. And this, if it is, then it becomes, we need to be self-regulatory, which would need to self-management self-control, transparency, adaptability, achievement, drive, and initiative. So this ultimately would lead to social regulation, which is primarily relationship management. And relationship management here would mean inspirational leadership, developing others, influence, change as a catalyst, conflict management, building bonds, teamwork, and collaboration. And this, in total, will ensure that we ensure that, as an organization, we work towards a happy work environment. And I always believe that when I look back onto my career, onto what I've worked up towards whatever I am today, and for you youngsters, it is very, very important that network and relationships matter. So today, there are organizations, especially for HR students, like NIPM, NHRD Network, and various organizations where your networking skills improve. And within an organization also, if you look at it, if a person who is relating well, who is networked well, is a person who really kind of grows in that organization. We need to have a win-win kind of a situation for them to move up in the hierarchy. So an approach to networking, if you had to take, you need to be aware of what the benefits are going to be. Definitely, you would see that networking does help you climb up the ladder much faster, work to develop areas of personal expertise, analyze your current network of contacts, which would help you in terms of where you stand amongst yourself, amongst you know, your contacts, it's establishing your own networking goals, Get out there, promote yourself, and make contact. I think becomes very critical. Sell networking to others. Make sure that networking benefits all parties and be an advocate for others. I think with these few words, I just thought I'll give you an overview as to how the happiness quotient or how we can make sure that in this VUCA world, happiness can make the difference. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to questions from you. Thank you, and thank you.